Hi Bobcats! In this video we're going to take a look at the different types of intermolecular forces. Our objectives are to be able to list and describe the four types of intermolecular forces. Uh, still keeping in mind that intermolecular forces are different from chemical bonds and then also to relate some basic properties to these intermolecular forces. There are four types of intermolecular forces. They are shown here on the slide with ion dipole attractions, hydrogen bonding, dipole dipole attractions, and London dispersion forces. They are shown in order of their strength. The weakest one is London dispersion forces down at the bottom, and the strongest is ion dipole attractions up at the top. It is possible for a substance to have more than one of these uh, uh, intermolecular forces present. In fact, every substance um, has uh, London dispersion forces present. So all substances have these. Um, we'll be evaluating in a later video which of these four intermolecular forces is the strongest one present in a molecule. We'll also call that the dominant intermolecular force. And so just keep in mind that even if one of these other ones is present and so it makes it dominant, we still have the London dispersion forces present in that molecule as well. The first one we're going to look at is ion dipole attractions. Uh, dipole is more or less the physics version of what chemists call a polar molecule. So ion dipole means ion polar molecule attraction. And if you look in the upper right corner here at this uh, Mickey Mouse tilted to the side, um, this is um, a water molecule. The two white atoms are the hydrogens and the red one is the oxygen. And the oxygen is much more electronegative than the hydrogen, so the electrons spend more time with the oxygen, making the oxygen, oxygen end of the molecule slightly negative. It's not a full minus one charge by any stretch of the imagination. And so we indicate that it's a partial charge with the lowercase Greek letter delta. So the delta negative indicates the negative end of the molecule. And then the delta positive notation that's being shown here around the hydrogens indicates that the hydrogens are slightly positive. Um, it used to really bother me when I saw these drawings that we have two partial positives and only one partial negative. If it's a neutral molecule, shouldn't they all cancel out? Well, most textbook authors don't bother. They just say, hey, this end of the molecule is positive, this end's negative, and they may make the 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 more than one charge in a spot, um, but they just generally just say, hey, there's a partial positive end, there's a partial negative end. Overall, everything will add up to zero, but just the notation we use tends not to, to put that. Every once in a while, you'll run across a textbook author that shows water like this and puts that it has two negatives, two partial negatives, but most of the time, you'll just see it as a partial positive and a partial negative. Okay, so water has a positive end and a negative end. If water interacts with an ionic compound, then the polar water molecule will be attracted to the ions. Um, in this case, we have a positive that's down in the lower right that's indicated by the blue sphere. We've got that plus one charge. And then we've got a minus one charge um, more over to the left where we have that green atom. Notice that as the water molecules are attracted to these ions, they line up with a different orientation on each one of these ions. Around that negative ion, the positive hydrogen ends of the water molecules tend to point towards the ion, but on the positive ion, the negative oxygen ends of the molecule point towards that positive ion. And so the ion dipole attractions are the blue dotted lines, which are indicating um, attraction between an ion cation with its plus one charge or an anion with its negative one charge, and then the polar molecule water. We will revisit this ion dipole interaction more closely in chapter 13 on solutions, um, where we'll examine this case of, say, water dissolving sodium chloride. 
um, the water molecules approach the sodium chloride crystal and they start to encapsulate one of the ions until the water molecules are pulling more strongly on that ion than um, the surrounding ions are pulling on it. That's what's happening like right here. Those water molecules are starting to be able to lift off that negative chloride ion. Once the chloride ion has separated, the um, water molecules will completely surround it and we call that a hydrated ion. Um, if it was a, a solvent other than water, we would call it solvated, but because it's water, we call it hydrated. Um, up here at the top, there's already a positive ion that has been removed, uh, dissolved, and uh, notice that the negative oxygen ends are pointing towards the ion, um, and the positive hydrogen ends are pointing out away from the ion. The next type of intermolecular force that we're going to look at is known as dipole-dipole attractions. Uh, dipole, again, just refers to a polar molecule where we have a permanent asymmetric distribution of the electrons so that there is a permanent positive and negative end to the molecules. In the solid form, as this molecule crystallizes, the molecules tend to line up to maximize that attractive interaction between the positive end of one molecule and the negative end of another molecule. So you end up with all of these types of attractions going on. Um, so when you have pol polar molecules, they can attract each other with these dipole-dipole interactions. The next type of attraction we're going to look at is known as hydrogen bonding, and this is a really terrible use of the word bond. Uh, hydrogen bonding is not a bond, it is an intermolecular force. Once again, we're using the blue dotted lines to indicate these intermolecular forces. So the attraction between one water molecule and the next is known as hydrogen bonding, and it is a special case of dipole-dipole um, interaction, it is just, it's like dipole-dipole on steroids. It is so much stronger than the normal dipole-dipole interactions. It can happen anytime within a molecule you have a hydrogen atom that is bonded to a nitrogen, an oxygen, or a fluorine. And then that hydrogen atom on one molecule, such as this guy right here, um, is attracted to the oxygen on a nearby molecule. So that's what uh, hydrogen bonding is about. This graph tries to convince you why hydrogen bonding gets its own special name rather than just being included as dipole-dipole interactions. Um, this chart is showing you um, for the different um, a, a series of hydride compounds. So for instance, if we look at this purple uh, series of compounds down here, these are all the um, uh, group 14, um, atoms, carbon, silicon, germanium, and tin, and these are their hydrides where there are four hydrogens bonded to them. And if we plot their boiling point versus their period, we get a decently uh, linear fit. And you'll see that for the uh, nitrogen family, the fluorine family, and the oxygen family, something similar happens for the heavier hydrides. So all of these um, hydrides tend to have this fairly linear relationship for their boiling points, but ammonia, hydrofluoric acid, HF, and water totally buck that trend, and they have much higher um, boiling points than any other uh, compound that is in that same family. That significantly higher boiling point is the reason why hydrogen bonding gets its own special name. This attraction is so much stronger in these cases.